Good evening and welcome to our midweek um, Bible study and prayer time here at Merriman Road Baptist Church. And I'm so glad that you're going to join us in this way. And I know it is not as up close and personal as meeting in person, but uh, I'm glad that you would join us by uniting your heart with us in prayer and in God's Word. And uh, we know that this honors the Lord. And so I'm, I'm glad that you're joining us and honoring him in this way. Let me call our hearts into the Lord's presence uh, with Psalm 65, which reads, Praise is rightfully yours, O God in Zion. Uh, vow to you, your vows will be fulfilled. All humanity will come to you. And one who hears our prayers even though our iniquities overwhelm us, only you can atone for our rebellions. How happy is the one you choose and bring near to live in your courts. For we will be satisfied with the goodness of your house and the holiness of your temple. And so tonight we have reason to praise him because he's chosen us. And, and because we can gather in his temple now, well, this building here at the church is not the temple that we would gather in. It is in the heavenly temple where we are given freedom and access to the Father through Jesus Christ. And so wherever you are, you're able to join with us in the Lord's presence. And so I'm going to ask that we would begin our time together uh, in a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. And uh, I just, as, as we bow our hearts in his presence, I just want to call on you. Uh, this this day to think of the reasons personally that you can praise him personally that you're thankful for what he's done in your life and what he's doing even in this day Lord, we come to thank you and to praise you for you're worthy of our praise Lord, we thank you in this day as a church for the way you've blessed us and protected us lord as we we see your hand in, in all of these things. We see how you have answered our prayers and our requests in, in so many ways. Lord, we thank you for, for that this past week when uh, the Backyard Bible Clubs were able to, uh, to happen. And, and Lord, boys and girls and families to hear the gospel. And, and Lord, just in all the ways that you protected those, Lord, those gatherings. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you and we praise you how you've protected us as we've come together to worship. I'm so thankful for, uh, for the opportunity to, to see one another and to pray with one another and to praise you together. Lord, today we praise you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your word that speaks to our heart and reminds us the truths of, of this, this relationship we have uh, with you by faith. For revealing yourself to us and teaching us how to live in a covenant relationship with you for these things we would pray in thanksgiving in our hearts in jesus name amen i'm going to ask if you would to take a bible and and turn with me to daniel chapter 4 and this is a a large chapter that we want to consider tonight we may not read all of it um, just for the sake of time but it, it tells of a, a story uh, of, of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, a, a segment of his life where he finally turns to confessing, confessing that uh, the Almighty God that Daniel worships is the true God. Now, we've, we've heard him say this a couple times when, when God miraculously has worked through Daniel's life or last week in Shadrach, Meshach, and um, um, Abednego, couldn't think of his name, uh, his life, uh, he, gave, he gave assent, he gave uh, a recognition, but here we're going to read of, of, of what is, is more a conversion experience. And so in this, what I want us to notice tonight, there's certainly probably many different um, applications to the story, but one of these applications is that of personal testimony. Because that's what chapter 4 is. It is Nebuchadnezzar's personal testimony of faith in God. 
And so I would challenge you to, to know that you have a personal testimony. And God gives you a platform for the sharing of that story. When you have conversations with family members, when you have conversations with a neighbor over the fence, uh, the coworker in the cubicle next to you, he gives you opportunity to share that testimony. And if, if you think about it, the components, the major uh, components of that testimony are the same ones that, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar will use. What my life was like before, my faith in God, how I came to faith in God, and in our case, our confession in Jesus Christ, how we, how we came to salvation, and third, how it has made a difference in my life. And we're going to see all three of those are born out in Nebuchadnezzar's testimony. Uh, he has a rather long-winded testimony, we might say, in chapter 4 here. But let's, let's begin our reading, and, and we'll come back and, and look at those different components in application. Uh, Daniel, chapter 4, verse 1. King Nebuchadnezzar, to those of every people, nation, language who live in all of the earth, may you prosper in prosperity increase. I am pleased to tell you about the miracles and the wonders the Most High God has done for me. Now, this is... Uh, very clear he's not talking about one of his gods the gods of Babylon because they all have specific names he's talking about the God of Daniel who is the most high God and and notice he, he's, he's focused on what God has done in his life just as your testimony ought to refer to how God has worked in your life how great are his mercies here's a, a statement of praise how great are his miracles, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at ease in my house and flourishing in my palace. I had a dream, and it frightened me. While I was in my bed, the images and the vision in my mind alarmed me. So I issued a decree to bring all the wise men of Babylon to me in order that they might make the dream interpretation known to me. When the diviners and the priests and the mediums and the Chaldeans and the astrologers came in, I told them the dream, but they could not make its interpretation known to me. Finally, Daniel, named Belshazzar, after the name of my gods, the spirit of the holy God is in him. He came before me. I told him the dream. And Belshazzar's head, the head of the diviners, because I know that you have a spirit of the holy God in you. No mystery puzzles you. Explain to me then the vision of my dream that I saw and its interpretation. In the visions of my mind, as I was lying in my bed, I saw this. There was a tree in the middle of the earth, and its height was great. And the tree grew large and strong, and its top reached to the sky it was visible to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful. Its fruit was abundant. And on it was food for all. Wild animals found shelter under it. And the birds of the air lived in its branches. Every creature was fed from it. Now as I was lying in my bed, I also saw in the visions of my mind an observer, a holy one, coming down from heaven. He called out loudly, cut down the tree, chop off its branches, strip off its leaves, scatter its fruit. Let the animals flee from under the, at the birds from its branches, but leave the stump with its roots in the ground and with a band of iron and bronze around it in the tender grass of the field. Let him be drenched with dew from the sky and share the plants of the earth with the animals. Let his mind be changed from that of a man and let him be given the mind of an animal for seven periods of time. This word is by decree of the observer. And the matter is commanded from the Holy One. This is so the living will know that the Most High is ruler over the kingdom of men, and he gives it to anyone he wants. He sets the lowliest of men over it. This is the dream that I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had. Now, Belshazzar, tell me the interpretation, because none of the wise men of my kingdom can make known the interpretation to me, but you can, because you have the Spirit of the Holy God. And then Daniel, 
whose name is Belshazzar, was stunned for a moment, and his thoughts alarmed him. But the king says, Belshazzar, don't let the dream or its interpretation alarm you. Belshazzar answered, my lord, may the dream apply to those who hate you, its interpretation to your enemies. For the tree you saw, which was large and great and strong, whose top reached the sky and was visible to all of the earth, whose leaves are beautiful and its fruit abundant, and on it was food for all, under, all it, under it the wild animals lived, and its branches and the birds of the air lived. This tree is you, the king, for you have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown and even reached the sky. Your dominion extends to the ends of the earth. The king saw an observer, the holy one, coming down from heaven, saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump with its roots on the ground, with the band of iron and bronze around it, and the tender grass of the field. Let him be drenched with dew. This is the interpretation, your majesty. This is the sentence of the Most High, that it has been passed against my lord the king. For you will be driven away from the people to live with the wild animals. You will be fed on grass like cattle. You will be drenched with dew from the sky for seven periods of time until you acknowledge the Most High is ruler over the kingdoms of men. And he gives it to anyone he wants. As for the command to leave the tree's stump with its roots, your kingdom will be restored to you as soon as you acknowledge that heaven rules. Therefore, my advice, and it seemed good to you, my king, is to separate yourself from sin by do doing what is right and from your injustices by showing mercy to the needy, and perhaps there will be an extension to your prosperity. So, this, remember, this is a testimony. Nebuchadnezzar is writing it. It is, it is his record of the testimony of how God dealt with him. He began the testimony, you noted, with words of praise. It's very clear that he's singing the praises of the Lord. And he goes into the story in such a way as to be transparent and to let it be known that these things happened to him. As I said, this part of the testimony is, is like my life before I met Christ. Right? I, I would be able to say the same things. I, I lived my life the way I thought best. I tried to do what I thought was good, but, uh, but I didn't seek the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar is saying the same thing. I was at home in my palace, content and prosperous. I felt good about things, he says. I thought I had everything in control. I was in control of my own destiny, he says. Um, he wasn't having to go to battle um, as he had early in his rule because he had subdued. His city had been built up. The palaces, hanging gardens of Babylon were complete uh, and considered to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The walls of his city were 300 feet high, 80 feet wide, Babylon was the largest city in the world at this time. Uh, an estimated size was over uh, 2,500 acres, with the Euphrates River flowing underneath of its walls, so it was supplied with fresh water. He had storehouses in the city that contained food for up to 10 years. Uh, if, if the city happened to be if a stronger army happened to be raised and to come against the city, they could hold out. He was prosperous. Uh, he felt secure. Um, and he would say, he, he, he reveals, he, he had been exposed to God. He knew who the God of Daniel was, but he was assured in himself. I knew about God, but my pride blinded me to the truth is is really his story um, and so god revealed himself to nebuchadnezzar again in a dream nebuchadnezzar says in verse five i had a dream that made me afraid in all of his self-assurity and all of his pride this dream shook his world he was terrified um it was not just a bad dream. He knew that. He knew that, that the message of this vision 
uh, was speaking to him and uh, and he was afraid you, you may know what that's like in the middle of the night to rise up in fear to wake up and af- afraid maybe it comes with the phone call of a car accident or maybe it is maybe it is a a diagnosis that comes sweeping down on you and and everything is turned upside down well whether it's a dream or an accident or hardship or a storm i would remind you as i'd remind myself today we are not in control uh, nebuchadnezzar is being reminded of this in his own life we are not in control the control we think we have is but an illusion god is in control and i know that statement alone for many people brings fear Uh, they're afraid of god because they don't know him they're afraid to trust him because they've not learned of him but for you and i who who claim to live by faith this should not cause us to fear in fact it should give us the opposite effect it should give us peace knowing and reminding ourselves that god is in control and he's in control of your life for nebuchadnezzar this thought that god was the one who was in control of his life was fearful he has a dream so he he immediately wants the answer he wants to know the meaning of this dream so he calls the wise men of babylon to be brought before him that they would interpret the dream for him but they can't interpret the dream and so finally is his text finally daniel comes and when daniel hears the dream you notice in verse 19 he was stunned he was alarmed because they understood its meaning he was rightfully fearful of telling the king uh, what this dream meant because it was not good you didn't want to go to a king like this with bad news all right you you only wanted to go to him with good news uh, but the king says to him don't let the dream or its interpretation alarm you tell me what it means um in in this testimony the king again is very transparent Uh, he hears the meaning of the dream and he recognizes it and daniel tells him what to do right daniel tells him to repent um acknowledge the rule that heaven rules Uh, separate yourself from your sins that's that's repentance it's turning away from your sins and daniel is brave enough bold enough to say by doing what is right and from injustices by showing mercy to the needy repent daniel gives him this message but verse 28 indicates he didn't listen all right look at verse 28 all this happened to the king nebuchadnezzar at the end of 12 months as he was walking on the roof of the royal palace in babylon the king exclaimed is this not babylon the great that i have built by my vast power to be a royal residence and to display my majestic glory so he again in his testimony is giving the truth right he's showing himself as prideful self-centered self-assured i did this he says giving no acknowledgement to the fact what daniel told him uh, all the way back in the early chapters in his first dream that god made nebuchadnezzar the king that god gave him this authority god gave him this power and he claims it for himself again this is testimony he doesn't give all the sordid details of his sin which by the way i'll take opportunity to say is i don't think it's ever a good thing to give any acknowledgement to satan's victories in our lives Uh, i think like nebuchadnezzar we should be able to simply say i was living in sin i was foolish before god i was prideful 
uh, and, and not go into the, really the sordid details. Um, because that just, that just uh, pleases Satan. It doesn't please God. But that's the way he tells his story. It's just very clear, very straightforward, and it's clearly his pride that he gives attention to. Look at verse 31. While the words are still in the king's mouth, a voice came from heaven, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is declared that the kingdom has departed from you. Again, it's pretty clear that this is uh, the king's testimony because nobody else would have heard it. Nobody else would have known it just like the king did, right? So the word comes to the king. The kingdom's departed from you. Now, we're not told how that happened. Well, if there was a rebellion, uh, if one of his own sons kicked him out, we, we're not told any of the details other than his perspective. God did this. You're driven away from the people. You're going to live like a wild animal, and you will, we will feed on the grass like cattle for seven periods of time and until you acknowledge the Most High as ruler over the kingdom of men. And he gives it to anyone he wants. And at that moment, the sentence against Nebuchadnezzar was ex ex executed. He was driven away from the people. He ate grass like cattle. His body was drenched with dew from the sky until his hair grew like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. But at the end of those days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up to heaven, and my sanity returned to me. And then I praised the Most High, and I honored and I glorified him who lives forever. So, what do we have happening here? Um, his description is one of repentance. He turns and looks now to heaven rather than looking to himself. Uh, he, he knows now and confesses it that God is in control of his life and that the successes he's enjoyed came to him because of God, even though he had ignored God's leadership. And the words of his introduction make sense in light of his testimony, right? Verse 2, it is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. God is in control. And I give him this praise from a humble heart. Verse 3 is, how great are his signs, how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. Friend, I, I want to tell you this. I know you know this. But humility is the mark of true conversion. And we can't come to Christ in our pride uh, we cannot make our way into his presence based on our own ability, our own self-confidence. No, we humble ourselves. We come to the cross on our knees and we confess him as Lord and Lord of all. And this is the testimony we're reading from Nebuchadnezzar, which if you put it in perspective, it seems quite strange that this pagan God would come to recognize that, that the God of the universe, the God of Israel, the God of Daniel is the high God the God to be worshipped. But this is where he comes to. Um, and notice, he, he goes into praise, and I praise the Most High, and I honored and I glorified him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. His kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, and he does what he wants with the army of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth. There is no one who can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? At that time, my sanity returned to me and my majesty and splendor returned to me from the glory for the glory of my kingdom. My advisors and my nobles, they sought me out. I was reestablished over my kingdom and even more greatness came to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise, exalt, and glorify the king of heaven because all of his works are true. And his ways are just. 
And he is able to humble those who walk in pride. So, the testimony, which begins with what Nebuchadnezzar's life was like before. How he rested in his own strength, but yet that, that strength and that control he thought he had was nothing. And he came by the word of God to understand his own sin. But yet he was rebellious. And he was humbled. And in his humility, he turned and he looked to heaven. And he confessed that God is the true God. And in repentance, he humbled himself before that God. And he was redeemed. And God then restored to him his kingdom. And that which happened to him, he, he tells of how, how God now has set him in this place where the nobles come to seek him out. He's reestablished with even more greatness. And that is why he now lives for the Lord. Life is so much richer because God is in control, Nebuchadnezzar says. Faith in God has brought to him a full and meaningful life. So what does Nebuchadnezzar's testimony say to you and me? I think it says several things. Yeah, it gives us an illustration of what our testimony should look like. But just considering this, I ask you to consider how we see that God works in everyone's life in a personal way. What I mean by that is your testimony is not the same as my testimony. Nebuchadnezzar's testimony is not the same as Moses' testimony. You know, it's not the same as Gideon's testimony. You know, I'll hear all the time people saying, well, I, I'm just, you know, I'm looking for my burning bush, or I'm looking for my, uh, my fleece, or I'm trying this, or I'm looking for that. But, but God deals with each of us individually where you are to bring you to him and to grow you in your faith and your following of him. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar shares his personal testimony. His testimony is not like ours, and don't expect it to be. But we also see in this, not only is God working with us in an individual way, but he is uh, he's patient with us, and he's never far from us. No matter who you are, from, from the, the religious to the pagan, God is close, and he is desiring that we would draw near to him and i think that message is really important to many of us who are maybe praying for a, a lost son or a daughter or maybe a grandson or granddaughter that's on you heavy on your heart and you think that they're so far from god but you can be sure god's not far from them and he's looking for ways to bring them to himself he's working through people and their testimony and as he wants to work through your testimony. And that God is so patient with us. Consider how patient he was with Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, four different times in these four chapters, you know, he, he has revealed himself to Nebuchadnezzar. God is patient. God wants us to repent and turn to him. The theme of the chapter is really clear. It's, I, I would say it's in verse 25. Until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdom of men, humble yourself today. Of course, the story is also reveals that you know some people, some people will not look to God until they've gone all the way to the bottom. And that's Nebuchadnezzar's story. That's Nebuchadnezzar's testimony. And if God can save a man like Nebuchadnezzar, God can save anyone. God can save you. He can save the one you're praying for that you think is far from him. Now, God's grace is greater. Aren't we thankful for that tonight? That the God has revealed himself to us. You know, we're reading a story about Nebuchadnezzar, but we're really reading the story about God and his love for us. Would you pray with me tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us, for your patience with us, for your grace towards us, for your mercy. And Lord, tonight as we open your word and we read of it, the story that was written so long, long ago, 
Yet it has a fresh message for us, reminding us we can trust you, depend upon you. Lord, I would pray for anyone who might be looking in and and just hearing the story, maybe just out of curiosity, but Lord, you're drawing them to yourself, even by your word. Lord, help them to know that today is the day of salvation, that right now you would you would draw them to yourself. Oh, Father, draw them. Bring them to faith. Let them call upon your name. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So next, I, I want us to take a, a few minutes in, uh, just in, in prayer as, as we would come before the Lord in repentance and confession, which is always a needed part of our prayer, and in intercession and, uh, and then we'll come back to a, a benediction. Uh, but to lead us in this segment of our prayer, I'm going to ask Pastor Dave to come and guide us as we pray. As we come before the Lord and as we've heard his word this evening, it's so important that we would humble ourselves to hear and to heed as he says. So as, as you've heard the word of God this evening, I just encourage you to humble yourself before the Lord. Allow his word to speak into your heart and your life and, and to bring about the change that you know the Lord desires. So just, as we would just bow our heads and, and, and close our eyes and seek the Lord uh, as, as he's speaking to our hearts through his Holy Spirit, as he reveals those things to you, to you that, that you would know are, are not honoring to him, uh, take this time to confess those to the Lord and agree with them that they are indeed sin and that we would need to turn away from those. Take time silently just to, to confess those to the Lord this evening. Father, indeed, we know that you are holy, and it is our pride that, that causes us to, to really to worship ourselves and, and to place ourselves in a, uh, in a place where we were not designed to be. Lord, you are God. You are holy. You are all-powerful. You alone are worthy of worship. You are worthy of, of complete obedience. Lord, forgive us for our pride. Forgive us for placing ourselves in a position of, of really just arrogance and, and desire. Uh, Lord, we desire change. So, Lord, humble our hearts before you. We, we confess and, and turn from the sins that, that we have spoken to you and agree with you that they are indeed our sin. Lord, we come knowing that you provided for us a way of escape, a way of forgiveness through your son, Jesus. We know his blood covers us. From our sin and you've removed that sin as far as the east is from the west god we uh, we need that cleansing in our life we thank you for your forgiveness lord renew us with a willing spirit give us boldness and courage to follow you lord as daniel was bold to speak to nebuchadnezzar uh, lord may we be uh, bold, your bold witnesses to testify of your goodness and your grace of your holiness in our lives. Father, help us to live in, in faith each and every day. And as we continue in prayer, Lord, would, would you just uh, take our needs, our things that have been on our hearts and our minds that are, that are worries, uh, and let's, let's take time to, to seek the Lord. Maybe you have a concern or a worry, something that's been bringing you down, that you just You've been trying to hold on to as if you control it. Um, take time now to, to release that control and, and recognize that God is in control of those circumstances, that situation. Uh, let's, let's take those worries and those burdens and place them at the feet of our Lord silently uh, at this time. Father, you tell us in your word, ask and it will be given to you. Seek 
and you shall find knock, and the door will be opened to you. Father, we know that, that our needs are many, and, and you call us to bring our cares and our concerns to you, and to seek your will in the midst of all of those. Lord, give us faith uh, in you over all these circumstances. Father, whether it be those maybe who are wrestling and needing work or are struggling and making ends meet, or maybe it's a health concern, Lord, we, we cast these cares to you and know that you are able to provide according to your riches and glory. Father, I pray tonight that those that are, are wrestling in their faith, Lord, that you would grant them faith by your grace. Lord, help us as your church to be a people of faith. Lord, help us to look to you that you are above our circumstances and that you rule over all of them. And Lord, may that fill us with a tremendous joy to know that you are good and you are a good, good father who desires to meet the needs of his children. And Lord, we can come to you uh, knowing of your amazing love and how you've provided for us. You've given us your only son. How will you not also give us all things? Lord, may that, may that joy lead us to a peace in our life, a peace in the midst of the storms, no matter what this life may have, uh, may throw at us, no matter what objects Satan may throw to try to cause us to stumble. Lord, that we would have peace knowing that our, in you our, your love is secure, uh, that we are secure in your love. Uh, so, Father, uh, grant us your grace. Father, I pray that we would approach you as your people with a humble spirit. Lord, that amongst us there would be a willingness to defer, uh, to, to seek uh, for the, the good of others above our own interests. Lord, that you would promote unity within your people, that we would be one as, as Christ is, is in you and, and he, you were in him. Lord, may we be one in, in you and the truth. Father, we may, may we be ever pursuing of the mission of God that you have for us. May we move forward in, in sharing your love with those around us and, and seeking to meet the needs of others by your grace. Uh, Father, we, uh, we thank you for those that we have the opportunity to partner with, not only at Merriman Road, but with the church plants that are around us, our sister churches in the Lord. We thank you for the work that you're doing in them. We ask that you would continue to move forward in those churches in Detroit and North America and around the world. Father, we pray for uh, the, our groups, our small group leaders, and our, our groups meeting, uh, we know, in different circumstances. Lord, we pray for their strength. We pray that they would stay close in, in your word and that you would encourage them as they continue to, to teach the word of God to, to those that gather together, either online or in, in homes, at the parks. Uh, Father, be with the children and the families that, that are in our church. Give them wisdom and guidance as, as parents are seeking to raise their children in difficult times, as, as they're looking at the school year ahead and they're wondering what, uh, what can be done, uh, what approach to take. Uh, Lord, I pray that there would be peace and direction in the midst of all of that, and that you would lead uh, those children in those homes through the, the love and the care of, of their moms and dads and, and grandparents. Father, we, we lift up our church family to you. We know there's many uh, who are sick and are recovering from sicknesses. Lord, we we want to pray for Dave Mays and as you help him in his time in the hospital. Lord, grant him your strength. Uh, we pray for Carol as she's continuing to seek treatment in, in the midst of cancer. We just pray for her, that you would strengthen her and give her healing. Father, we pray the same for Bernita Fuller. Uh, just help her through those treatments she has, uh, and, and grant her healing. Father, for the Branton family and for John Lewis, pray for him. Uh, Give him strength. We pray for Gavin, John's son, as he recovers from an infection. Lord, I pray that he can return soon to be with his father. And Father, for JW, Lord, pray for him as he recovers from his brain surgery. Lord, grant him healing and strength and, and faith. And Lord, we pray for Annette. Lord, give her grace and strength in her recovery. Um, uh, so give her a sense of your presence and in, in your nearness at this time. For, for Pam Denise, Lord, we pray for the effectiveness of the treatment that she's seeking in her uh, cancer. Lord, we just ask that you would grant her healing and encourage her faith each day. Father, for Mark Roby, just strengthen him. Help him as he's recovering as well from a heart attack. And, and for Richard Glenn, help him in, in his recovery. Uh, encourage his faith, strengthen his body and his, and his mind. And, and Father, for Ed White, Lord, just, uh, Lord, Help him physically recover from his fall. 
and encourage his heart each day. Father, we know you know the needs of our church families. You know the needs of our hearts, and I just pray that you would meet those needs. Lord, we, we thank you again for this week of those families that we were able to encounter in our Backyard Bible Club. We pray, pray for growth and faith for those five who trusted in you and, and pray for you to continue to save those that are maybe connected to those families that, that uh, we're continuing to follow up with as a church family, Lord. Grant faith, grant uh, your salvation through Jesus. And Father, we just pray for an opportunity we have tomorrow as we distribute food to, to families in our community. We pray that the gospel would go forward as we meet the needs of those who would, who would come by our, our church building. And, and just ask that you would uh, bless those who, who help distribute that food, encourage their faith, and, and just orchestrate all the details in that. Father, we love you and we, we thank you for just this privilege we have to come into your presence and know that we have a great high priest, Jesus, who, who sits enthroned in heaven and, and intercedes for us in all our needs. And Lord, so we, we know that we are heard and we are confident in your ability to answer and your power and your love. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dave. For leading us uh, in that time of prayer and I thank you for joining us uh, because we're, we're promised from God's Word that when we agree together in prayer in Jesus name that he both hears and answers our prayer and so it's important that we take time to do this and maybe it is that more of our church family are actually able to connect and pray with us uh, via the internet than we would have in person on a midsummer night um, uh, on a Wednesday night, um, that, that may be very true, but I, I, I pray that we do take time to pray together uh, as, as the church of God. Let me just pray a prayer of blessing over you. May God's grace be on you, and may he strengthen you, and may you know the fullness of his love and be able to comprehend the length and the width and the height and the depth of God's love. And now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to his power that works within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Have a, have a wonderful night and rest of the week. And we look forward to worshiping together on the Lord's Day.